I was yeah. also yeah. thinking in the more broader sense when you were talking about this, the narrative, right? So are you in his um, talk was saying about like... I have this idea um, that uh, as we've herded a billion people online, uh, I think maybe even more than a billion people, uh, we've entered into something that I call a social singularity. Um, so Bernard Vinge, uh, the science fiction writer who originally de described the notion of the singularity back in the 1980s, I think first in Omni magazine, not that long after in an interview uh, in an early issue of Monda 2000, uh, the idea was that when we get artificial intelligences that are smarter than ourselves, the artificial intelligence will be so smart to bootstrap their intelligence to the point where uh, a artificial intelligence will be to us as the, its intelligence will be to us as our intelligence is to the uh, snails or, or something along those lines. So that was his idea of a singularity. And the, the important point here is that we can't think about or understand anything uh, that will be occurring within or for or socially or politically for human beings after the point of the singularity. And my idea is that we've already entered a singularity when we heard of a billion people online, that the, uh, the fragmenting of consensus narratives splintering into um, millions of different realities um, has created a situation uh, where we can't know what uh, humans will be like cognitively. Yeah, I, I hope I got that point across. Um, uh, when we have a billion people online, the, uh, the reality is, is so um, splintered that uh, we can't know what's coming to uh, human beings, either cognitively, socially, or politically. And of course, Everybody is toxic with bad tropes, and these tropes are, are amplified, of course, by commercial organisms like Facebook and so forth. But uh, we come pre-designed with uh, faulty beliefs. Uh, I, I don't think anybody would uh, dispute that. So we're bringing all that with us uh, into, into this uh, world in which everybody has access to the means of communication. And like he did a lot of <clears throat> work in like, brand, uh, lack of a better word, branding like cyber culture and like creating it uh -huh. like, like from like scratch where it was like, not, like he said, when he changed the magazine to uh, reality hackers in like the, the late 80s, he said like no one knew what a hacker was. So like the, the subscriptions went down from, what was it, um, high, what, 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 what the the, the first iteration of the magazine was and then it, then it became like mondo 2000 but he said like the reality hackers like went down because no one knew what a hacker was so anyways he's he says once like everybody became online he said like there was like a social singularity and he was explaining the social singularity is like he said like even even what he was thinking early on was like what he wanted to do with mondo was to break consensus reality <laughs> I remember one time when R.U. was on uh, a Team Human and... Yeah, the Jetsons on DMT, as, uh, as Mark Derry snarkily labeled it. It really became the, the voice of, you know, this 21st century, you know, post-television designer reality society. Yeah, Operation Mindfuck was too successful. Yeah, Operation Mindfuck was too successful. Yeah, Operation Mindfuck was too successful. So as I see it, America is living in a kind of a psychedelic substrate. So as I see it, America is living in a kind of a psychedelic substrate made of digital technology, but we're having a bad trip. Yeah, Operation Mindfuck was too successful. Yeah, Operation Mindfuck was too successful. Yeah, Operation Mindfuck was too successful.
And that's because we don't realize, we can't remember, we can't recall or retrieve the basic truth that we're living in a media environment that gives us a creative capacity over reality. Operation Mindfuck uh, was too successful. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then I just started laughing when I heard that. And and then he, in his talk too, he was talking about how like even like fucking modern like Russian uh, disinformation like campaigns, like internet ones, like study like <laughs> like stuff that Robert Downtown Wilson like did, you know? <laughs> and, like, and so he was talking about like breaking the consensus reality. And I think the last time with Kevin and I, I think you were there within the vacuum. I, I was talking about the similar thing was like everything is so like decentralized, like decentralized and, uh, and fragmented. And like I, that's a good thing, even though like it feels like weird and bad or, or whatever. But like no one has like a grip on like the main narrative. There, there is like like everybody considers themselves like like he was, they're also talking about like um, evangelicals considering themselves like. Uh, counterculture and like everybody like using the same like tools using for me yeah. I'm like they're everybody's using it's, the same marketing <laughs> like it's, like, it's, like, an, it's an iteration it's, of ourselves you know yeah, like humanity and like, <laughs> like that's like the thing too because like are you was saying something about like you know Google in the beginning before they got like all of the VC funds you know the thing was like don't be evil but he says like that doesn't scale up like once you scale up you're evil <laughs> and that, that was funny because like that was like the same argument that I was kind of like pointing to in tech when I was like what about if like we look at this and like what you guys are saying about branding and like scaling up like what if it what if we find out like it can't help but be evil <laughs> Like that's that's the evil thing, <laughs> and like in that sense too. Like early on, I did this poem called "Death of the Narrative," and it's going to like what you were saying. It, like for me, it was like this ritual for my own creative practice to like destroy my own narratives, in the sense to find like what I was talking about earlier is like the organic uh, uh, threads that are like out there. <laughs> an, an earthquake is happening uh, here right yeah. now yeah yeah <laughs> and and you know earlier Ruby. too in decoding the weird i was i saw this thing and i, I put the sorry, video sorry sorry i get i get scared a little scared <laughs> no. i interrupted you no no yeah no. <laughs> oh man it was yeah yeah it stops that's interesting because like i was just taking it like metaphorically i thought you <laughs> I didn't even actually had an action. No, no, it actually yeah. happened. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's yeah. even crazier. It's like, um, oh, man, this is strong. <laughs> <laughs> strong weed. Yeah, okay. Go, going to yeah. what I was saying about the decoding the weird, there's these clips that I put there about um, overlapping um, waveforms. And so they had a. Oh, yeah. They have the harmonic one, and you could see it. And then there was one that wasn't harmonic, right? And there's like a bunch of noise. And then like that's where we're 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 in like the the um, not harmonic one where there's like a bunch of noise. <laughs> and like uh, uh, because like you know also too what what I've been like listening to and and thinking about is Ralph Abraham and what he talks about. Like he he coins it as miracles, but like in these bifurcations, and then he even makes the statement too. But like miracles, he uses it, 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 it not in the normal sense of like because when people when they say miracles, they think there has to be like a positive connotation to it. But he just simply seen, says miracles that things that are like happen outside of like the model, <laughs> like what you can't predict, <laughs> and like yeah yeah. And are you serious? Was talking a little bit about this too because he mentions this quote by uh, Bob Dylan, and Bob Dylan uh, said something about like, "I embrace the weird, but I'm not sure if the no, I embrace the chaos, but I don't know if chaos embraces me." And then are you like, <laughs> as I get older, like he thinks about that too? <laughs> yeah, that makes little sense. Yeah, and, <laughs> right there, and, and like. That's the thing is like, uh, I think this is 
uh, circling it all back around, John, to um, the first ancestor codex of the Aztecs, right? And like in yeah. it is is the so they're st- they're taking the precious bones and they're, they're still in it to like create their first uh, people, right? And then Quetzalcoatl like stumbles and like breaks them, breaks the special bones, and so like that's like the comedy and tragedy of like humanity. We're 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 broken bones of the. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, I, I think that's like a, this trickster lesson too, you know, like the Taoist lesson is, yeah, there's always harmony, but you you never really know. Like once you think you know, it's like, oh, you lost it. Uh, you know, like that fable of like this young man, he, he like breaks his leg and everybody in the town is like, oh my God, like oh, we feel bad for you. Your son broke his leg. And he's like, and the guy's like, oh, we'll see. And the next day, the army comes and they don't take his son because because he broke his leg. And then everybody in the town's like, oh, you're lucky because your son broke his leg. And the guy's like, oh, we'll see. And then like the next day, like the arm, like the military comes there and like kills his son or something. Like that. <laughs> but you know, like you never really know what's going to yeah. what's going to happen. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was thinking about that, and we're definitely like in this accelerated state of like. I think maybe it's because we're we're trying to predict everything is why like there's like like we're 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 focusing like on the wrong side of like the perception. Because <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, yeah, I remember just, a couple of times I got like these like weird like existential panics like thinking about like this like like kind of stuff like you know the edges of like blockchain and like all this like financial weird bullshit. And, and, and I remember one time, like, this phrase, it's like freezing time, and then I'm like, they're trying to freeze hyperspace, and then I went to, like, the natural conclusion, I was like, I, don't do it, like, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> like, I got, like, this, like, really, really weird panic, like, do not try to trap the dream time, I think that's what happened, like, you can't do that. <laughs> like, yeah, like, that's, don't um, do it. <laughs> that's like something Douglas Hofstadter writes uh-huh. in I Strange Loop. That when he was a kid at the video store, it's like he always wanted to try and loop the the camera and the VCR so it would show itself, and the salesman would always freak out a little bit and mm-hmm. uh, stop him from doing that. As if there's something about that infinity that would, well, he, he kind of makes it into something more mystical, but from the salesperson's point of view, you know dollars and cents don't blow up on me now (laughs) yeah